Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the In the Ring Show with your host, Devious Damien. You know, the Off the Rope Show is known for doing their little 15 Reasons videos, where they call somebody to task who they think is garbage, and they give their 15 reasons why they are garbage. Well, you know, they've inspired me. So therefore, however, what I'm going to change is I'm not going to do 15, though. I'm going to do 10. So, in this video, I'm going to be calling a certain WWE superstar to task for, in my opinion, his super suckage. So, without further ado, the 10 reasons Ward Tensai sucks. Reason number 10, he's not Japanese. This motherfucker comes out with this Japanese follower throwing salt, dressing like a Japanese wrestler, ta Japanese fucking tattoos, and the tattoos are another reason I'll get to later. But the point is, he's trying to be Japanese. He's not fucking Japanese. He may have wrestled in Japan. He may have been successful in Japan. But the fact remains, he is not Japanese. Case closed. Number nine. Booked is unbeatable. He comes in and he squashes, just out squashes everybody he meets in the ring. Okay, this guy was never booked this way before, which I'm going to get to when I get to reason number eight. Never previously booked this way, so now because he comes back under some sort of Japanese gimmick, now we're supposed, I'm supposed to believe that a stint in Japan makes him unbeatable? Fuck you. Alright. I don't believe for a second he's unbeatable just because he went to Japan. Number eight. Fans remember him. Now I know some of you are going to say, Damien, how does the fact that the fans remember him make him suck? I'll tell you how it makes him suck. They remember the gimmick that he had when he was a complete fucking tool. Do you not hear the fans shouting, Albert, Albert, at him? That gimmick never got over. Then when Vince tried to repackage him as A-Train, that didn't get over either. Is there a coincidence? Is it a coincidence that A-Train, that was supposed to be the big bad monster, was constantly featured on shows like Velocity, Heat, shows that nobody gave a shit about, and, you know, they got put onto WWE.com exclusively. Why? Because they couldn't get the ratings on fucking regular TV. He wasn't over then, and quite frankly... I don't really feel he's over now. I think the WWE is trying to shove him down our throats, and I hope that they keep booing this guy and just, you know, like fucking Channing Albert at him just to show that he is not over. Period. Number seven, he's a shitty fucking wrestler. You know, he, he, he can't do shit. The only thing he's changed is he's added a backsplash to his fucking repertoire. Big fucking deal. That and a claw hold. Shit, I could do those fucking moves. Have Every fan watching who's above the age of five years old could do those fucking moves. Give me a fucking break. He's a shitty wrestler. Always has been, always will be. Case closed, bar none. Reason number six. No charisma. He goes out there, pretends to be Japanese, and destroys people. Nobody buys him as Japanese, and nobody should buy him as a monster. If you insist upon pinning him as a monster, put him against Kane. Or, or you know, bring back The Undertaker for, you know, a couple of appearances. Have him fight The Undertaker. Don't put him up against guys who aren't supposed to be monsters. Or... You know, case closed. He's not a monster. He has no charisma. He's stupid. He's a shitty wrestler. No charisma. Case closed. Reason number five. They put him over on Alex Riley, Yoshitatsu, and John Cena, and R-Truth. And there might be a couple others in there, but those are the guys I can think of right off the top of my head. The one that bothers me the most is John Cena. Now, I know some of you are going to say, well, Damien, you hate John Cena, so why do you care that he went over? Because I might not like John Cena, but whether I like him or not, the fact remains, he is the WWE's top guy. So, 
with that being said, John Cena should have been the last guy in line for Lord Tensai to be, if in fact that's what the result was going to end up being. John Cena should have been the last in line, not one of the first. Complete bullshit. I don't give a fuck if the only reason they did it is to make Cena look weaker and make his vic his victory at Extreme L Rules look more miraculous. It was still garbage, and there was no reason for it. Reason number four: the tattoos. I kind of I I, I kind of glazed over this reason. I glazed over this earlier. The tattoos. He's got several fucking Japanese tattoos on his body. He's not Japanese. I can see maybe a couple, but he's covered his head and some of his body in fucking Japanese tattoos. Dumbass. Covering your body in Japanese tattoos does not make you Japanese. Cut it the fuck out. Alright? Stop it. Just stop. Reason number three. Fucking Super Shredder lookalike. Going out there fucking bald and, and looking like Super Shredder. I didn't like it when they did it in the Ninja Turtle movie. And I don't like it now. Case closed. And by the way, Trio Woe Show, I'd, li I'd like to thank you for making the Super Shredder reference. Because you gave me the number three reason Lord Tensai sucks. Reason number two. His finisher. The fucking Ichiban, or the Baldo Bomb, as he used to call it. Whatever the fuck you want to call the goddamn thing. So how am I supposed to believe that a move where pretty much you're lifting the guy is high for a spine buster, and he's taking a bump from approximately the same height as he would for a spine buster. So how am I supposed to believe that this move is more devastating than the average spine buster? Now, I'm not trying to degrade the, a spine buster, mind you, but the point is, they're trying to book this move as like some super devastating move, and it's not. In fact, how many guys actually use a spine buster to win matches anymore? I, I mean, besides Arn Anderson, who has used a spine buster as a finisher? Few and far between, that's who. Just saying. Reason number one. Now, this one here, I might take up until my 15 minute time limit to express my rage for reason number one that Lord Tensai sucks. He is not, and he never fucking will be, the Great Muda. Now, he comes out with his fucking headgear going to the ring that looks like the shit the great fucking Moody used to wear. Then, he spits the green fucking mist into the trademark of the great Muda. It, it pisses me off. Okay? I have done my research. I've researched great Muda. I've researched Lord Tensai. And from all the research I've done, there does not appear to be any connection between the two men. I, I cannot see where they've trained together, where they ever teamed together, anything. I do not see where there has ever been any connection between the two men, other than possibly working together in N NJPW. And I, when I say working together, I don't mean in a match like they both worked in the same fed. Other than that, no connection whatsoever. And in my opinion, just working in the same fed does not make them connected. So therefore, that theory is out the fucking window. Lord Tensai. Stop stealing the great Muda's fucking shit. Alright? You pissing me off week after week. You come out and you the, the, the headgear and the mist. Stop it. And for all you fucking young marks who are going to sit there and say, Who the fuck is the Great Muda? Who the fuck is the Great Muda? YouTube him, damn it! YouTube the Great Muda. And if you are not impressed, well then you can eat shit and you can fucking die. If you're not impressed with the Great Muda, you don't deserve to live. That's the way it is. But of course, you probably wouldn't be impressed with John Cena. Or you wouldn't be impressed with the Great Muda. Excuse me, why? Because you're hooked on John Cena. Oh, you can't see me! You can't see me! Oh, I'm going to do the five knuckle shuffle! 
If you like that more than you like the great Muda, then you have no business calling yourself a wrestling fan, bar none. Bottom line. Tensai, not only do you not look like the great Muda, you cannot wrestle his style. Even if you were as skinny as he was, you still couldn't do it because you don't have the athletic ability. You will never have matches the quality of the great Muda. Even if Ricky Steamboat were today in his prime, you could not have the match with Ricky Steamboat that the great Muda did. Muda had great matches with Steamboat, with Sting, with Ric Flair, with Barry Windham. That's just a few names I can mention that the great Muda has worked and had great matches with. The Great Muda, it is no coincidence that the Great Muda was my favorite Japanese wrestler. And quite frankly, not just Japanese, I think the Great Muda was my favorite foreign wrestler. You know, some may say, oh, so now you're not you're knocking Eddie Guerrero. Him and, okay, well, maybe, I, I guess I'll put Eddie and the, and the Great Muda at the top of the list of foreign wrestlers. Because Eddie, while born in America, technically, I still kind of consider him a Mexican wrestler. So, Muda and Eddie, my two favorite foreign wrestlers. And there's reasons for that, especially the great Muda. The little, you know, like the little handspring elbow that people like to copy? Some divas like to copy it? You want to know who did the original handspring elbow that I remember? The great Muda. And he did it the best. Cart, like, like... A cartwheel into a forward handspring and then backwards handspring elbow. That was the shit. Hey Tensai, what are you gonna do that? I'll answer the question for you, Tensai. Never! You will never do it because you suck. You couldn't pull the move off on your best day. If somebody were to tell you, pull that move off or I'll shoot you in the head. If I were the one watching it happen, I would tell the guy pointing the gun at your head to shoot you in the head and spare the fucking time. Alright, you're not Muda. You never have been. You never will be. You didn't. You weren't trained by him. And for any people wondering, not only did he not train with the Great Muda, but no, the Great Muda is not dead. The Great Muda is very much alive and still wrestling, mind you. Which is more of a reason why Lord Tensai ripping him off is really gets on my fucking nerves. Because this, I, I've said it before and I'm going to keep saying it till it fucking sinks in with people. Lord Tensai is not even good enough to lick the scum from the bottom of the Great Muda's boot or shoe or whatever he wears to the ring. He's not worthy of licking that stuff from the bottom of his boot. At all. Period. And anybody. Go, like I said, go you, for all you younger marks who don't know who the Great Muda is. YouTube the Great Muda. Google him. And if you can watch his matches and tell me that you are not impressed, then like I said, you have no business being a wrestling fan and you should eat shit and you should fucking die and for the love of God, don't ever watch wrestling again. Because not liking the great Muda, at least, or at least not respecting his athleticism, that's a slap in the face to real fans like myself. And I know that for a fact that I'm not the only great Muda fan out there. Take fans who are 25 or older, and you can't and tell me that they have not seen one match of the great Muda. Most of them have. Maybe a few here and there haven't. Okay, and if you haven't, that's fine. But at least YouTube him and find out what he's like. And like I said, if you're not impressed, don't ever watch wrestling, and turn in your card that says you're a wrestling fan. Turn it in, and we'll burn it. And that's it. You're no longer part of the wrestling fan fraternity. For this edition of the In the Ring show, this is Devious Damien, signing out. <laughs>